I have a baby book that's full of pictures of my daughter. I know, lots of people have pictures of their kids, right? But this baby book is unique because all of the pictures in this album are from before my daughter was born. My daughter, when she was inside my wife's belly, my wife had 40 or more ultrasounds during that pregnancy. The doctors were gravely concerned about the pregnancy. They even hospitalized my wife for about a month and a half before the baby was due. You know, when my daughter was born on that day, they put us in this hospital room. There were these bright operating room lights, and there was this room full of all these beeping machines. And there was literally a squad of doctors ready to whisk my daughter away to the ICU to save her life. And then it happened. My, doctor came, my daughter came out into this world, and she was perfect. <laughs> and the doctors, they got bored, and they went away. And they took their beeping machines with them, and they turned down the operating, the operating room lights. And we were alone with our daughter in that room, and we told her her name was Allison. But I told her, it doesn't matter, because I'm always going to call her Gus. <laughs> I love being dad. We had other kids, and so we knew the drill. Uh, and for the first couple of months, everything was totally normal. And then we started noticing that Gus wasn't growing up the way our other kids did. As parents, we looked for these milestones, like crawling, and walking, and talking. And you know, Gus, she didn't do any of those when she was supposed to do that. And over the next year, we watched as she slowly fell behind everybody else her age. When she was 18 months old, we went to the doctor, and the doctor said she might have a developmental disability. It was like that doctor uncorked a bottle of demons. And as we drove home, my wife and I, we were flooded with worry. Worried about my daughter's health. Worried about her future and the trials she would go through. Worried about how long her life might even be. That was really tough. We felt very helpless, but we didn't know what to do. When she was 18 months old, we took her to an Easter egg hunt. It was up in the Snohomish Falls Theater, or the, the Falls uh, Theater over there. Um, we put her in with the rest of the kids, and when she went in to mix with the rest of the kids, uh, they started, the Easter egg frenzy began, and we watched as kids are in a circle around my daughter. We watched as they reached down and they grabbed the eggs from underneath her feet before she had a chance to get them. We watched as my daughter stood there with her empty basket the whole time. It broke my heart. My wife, she ran back to the car and she cried. You know, this idea of disability, it was unimaginable to us. You know, we, 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 we couldn't figure out how we would accept that. It seemed unimaginable to us that our daughter might have a disability. Um, you know, the word disability, it just, um, it was terrifying to us. And if you consider how our English language considers disability, well, you can maybe understand why. Look at how our English language describes disabled, lame, wrecked, powerless, and helpless. The opposite of this, which is to say what my daughter is not, is strong and healthy. And the usage notes, see cripple? You know, this wasn't published in the 1800s. This was published in 2013. So I want you to just think for a minute, after you've seen this, what does disability look like to you? <coughs> I'll tell you what it looks like to me. That's Gus. <laughs> when she was three years old, Encompass referred us to Seattle Children's, um, where she was diagnosed with autism spectrum disorder. Now if you're a parent, you understand that strong need that you have that human need that compels you to protect your kids. When my daughter received that diagnosis, I didn't have that opportunity. You know, I'm not different from anybody else. I would jump up in front of any harm's way to protect my daughter. But when the doctor gave that diagnosis, I sat powerless. When my daughter received what looked to me as a parent, like a mortal blow. We didn't know what to do. When we drove home, all I could do was hold my daughter in my arms. And I wept. But I don't give up that easily. 
And now we finally know what we were up against. Right? We had information. We met people who understood us. You know, we realized that we weren't alone. That gave us hope. And that's what we call Encompass. You know, Encompass, we signed a uh, dress up for therapy with Encompass. She goes to the speech therapy at Encompass, for speech therapist, over there. Works with her on speech and language and communications. She uses toys and she uses stories and incorporates that into the therapy. And uh, it makes it so much fun for my daughter. We've watched as her vocabulary has blossomed and her communication skills have made such a big difference since she started the therapy at Encompass. She also goes to occupational therapy. Her occupational therapist works with her on balance exercises and also with her muscles and her fingers and her hands so she can write. We've been watching as my daughter's artwork has changed from just scribbles into meaningful objects and ideas. And along the way, I found my own voice. I started advocating for my daughter at school. I formed Western Washington's first Girl Scout group specifically designed for girls with unique needs. And Parker's helping set that up. Our troop has kids from kindergarten all the way through 11th grade. We have typically developing kids in our troop as well as girls with special needs. And you know what? There isn't one kid in that troop that's going to get a call to come pick up their daughter like we got for our daughter, which we're trying to incorporate her into community programs and daycare preschool. So Encompass asked me to come here today and asked me to speak to you and I jumped at the opportunity to do it because I wanted to give something back. You know, um, Encompass was the North Star that helped us find our way when we needed help. They helped us, well, they were the first ones to help us understand my daughter's needs when she was only 18 months old when they came to our house and they helped us. My daughter is 8 years old now and Encompass is still a part of her life. She goes there twice a week. I've also joined the Father's Network. Who is the chair from the Father's Network? Um, you know, where I've started advocating for kids with special needs from a dad's perspective. The biggest lessons I've learned from all this, and you can't take on life's biggest changes alone, and you can't navigate through life's hardest parts by yourself. And yet I know that there will be other parents just like me who have a kid with a disability, and they will start out in the same shoes that I started out in, confused and isolated and not running where to start at all. I know Encompass is, has asked you to, to uh, you know, contribute today. Um, I'm contributing myself, and I'll be contributing today. Um, but I want to leave you with a, um, an idea, uh, an example of how we come to this helped my daughter in her life before we go. When my daughter first started speech therapy, the extent of her spoken language was the ability to maybe speak to you the last couple of words that you would say. Just a month ago, I went to a meeting with her teacher at school, and her teacher shared with me an evaluation. And this was an evaluation of her ability to create a story, her own story, based on just pictures. Uh, this was an official evaluation, so the teacher had to write down exactly everything she said. I saw the evaluation, and I saw poetry. And I will always refer to that evaluation as the four-step picture card poetry slam. And I would like to share her poem with you. I will recite it. Pooped the egg. It cracked the egg. The chick popped out. And number four is the chick. Look, it's cute. Thank you so much for your time.